image of Marilyn Monroe is a famous artwork done by Andy Warhol, who is sometimes considered the king of pop art. We are going to be using this image as our inspiration for our next project, which is called the Warhol Project. I'm going to be using this image of Zoe Saldana to create the Warhol effect here, and you will be choosing your image your subject the next time you're on computer. So some things to think about. If I pull this Marilyn image up again, you're going to be painting on lipstick. So it's good to have a subject that that makes sense for, first of all, and a subject with fuller lips to make that easier to paint on. And also a subject where the eyeshadow will be easy to put on as well. And Marilyn Monroe, her face is great for this. I chose this image of Zoe Saldana because I felt like it would be a good subject for that. And I was happy with the results. So I thought she was a good subject. So you can pick anybody you want. It can be a celebrity. It can be somebody you know if you have a good image of them. But keep in mind that it should be somebody who is suitable for the project. Now I want to talk a little bit about the Fair Use Act. Here is a summary of the Fair Use Act, and I'm just going to read this to you, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. The doctrine of fair use developed over the years as courts tried to balance the rights of copyright owners with society's interest in allowing copying in certain limited circumstances. This doctrine, at its core, is a fundamental belief that not all copying should be banned, particularly in socially important endeavors such as criticism, news reporting, teaching, and research. And you notice that I highlighted the areas that kind of apply to us, and there is some overlap here. But teaching and learning is one of those areas where you're able to use images that are copyrighted for somebody else for the purposes of learning and teaching. Although the doctrine of fair use was originally created by the judiciary, it is now set forth in the Copyright Act. Under the act, four factors are to be considered in order to determine whether a specific action is to be considered a fair use. These factors are as follows. The first one is the purpose and character of the use, including whether such use is of commercial nature or is for nonprofit educational purposes. All right, and again, we are a nonprofit educational entity. The nature of the copyrighted work. The amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole and the effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyrighted work. All right, so let's look at number three. Okay. Amount and substantiality of the portion used in related to the copyrighted work as a whole. So I did use the image, but I have altered it quite a bit. So yes, I'm using it. I'm using it for educational purposes and it is altered. And the last one, the effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyrighted work. So in other words, does this create its own value now where I could go out and make a profit? And the answer is no, I'm not gonna be selling this. I'm not making any kind of a profit on that. And you as a student would be in that same position. We, under the Fair Use Act, have a right and may legally use images that we see fit for the purpose of education. So next you'll be viewing a video that is going to discuss pop art, how it began, and who some of the key players are, and you're going to learn a little bit more about Andy Warhol. Bananas, my red coat, tomato soup, and comic books. But what do they all have in common? Two little words, pop and art. Pop art is more than an art movement. It's a lifestyle, a craze, a way of looking at the world. But what is pop art? Pop is young, bold, and fun. This is life in the 40s. It's a bit grey. 
In the 50s, people wanted plastic and glamour. They wanted to have a good time. Buy more, spend more. Don't just watch TV, be on TV. Now you can listen to the Beatles and Elvis, watch cartoons, eat popcorn, drive cars and become famous. Now it was pop art, all about culture. After all, pop art is popular art, art for all. But who were the pop artists? Richard Hamilton, this guy, said pop art was low cost, young, witty, glamorous and mass produced. Hamilton made collages using imagery he found in glossy magazines. Lifting images from films and advertising was completely bonkers at the time. This is one of the famous Marion portraits by Andy Warhol. Andy, Andy Warhol, this guy. See, a cool guy. But Andy, art is a product. The same as a production line of Coca-Cola bottles or Camel Soup. He liked to use bright colours and silk screening techniques to produce art on a huge scale. Pretty clever, I'd say. Pop art was revolutionary! Pop artists were competitive. Who could you watch first? Warhol had his advertising. Lichtenstein had his comic books. Pelosi had his collage and Minnie Mouse. Wait, let's go back to Lichtenstein. He used Bende dots to make his artwork look like comics, like the ones you get in newspapers. Female artists were also rocking the pop art trend. This is The Only Blonde in the World by English painter Pauline Boaty. Pauline added fun into her art and was a bit of a rebel. Girl power, Pauline. Pop art came out of the gallery too. Nicola L took this big red coat around the world to get people to get involved with her performance. This made a real pop crowd, not the celebrity faces in other forms of pop art. Pop art can also be found all over the world. In Iran, Parviz Tanavoli was a sculptor and painter. Like other pop artists, he made his art out of things that looked like they could be thrown away. In New York, Jean-Michel Basquiat remixed it with hip-hop and street art. Pop is on TV, on the radio and on the internet. Like right now! Does that mean I'm pop art? Well, there's one thing Andy Warhol and I can agree on. I don't know where the artificial stops and the real start.
Okay, now that you know a little bit more about the pop art movement and Andy Warhol, and I also threw in a video showing how silk screening is actually done, that's going to help us out a lot with this project. It's time for you to get to the computer and choose your subject. So remember, your subject needs to be suitable for this project. Don't forget to search large images only and hit view image before you grab that picture and save it. 